Happy Christmas, Man Fam. Let's spend the holidays in the wizarding world. Hello, Man Fam, and happy holidays. This is one of the busiest and most magical times of year. There is so much to do. I know people are traveling, there's friends and family, there's tons of parties and eating, and it is a delightful time of year. But we all know the holidays are also a stressful time of year with so much going on, and we here at Mammoth Club very much prioritize mental health and self-care, so that is what we're doing today. It is my second annual holiday Christmas self-care day in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. It's a very long title. We're working on it. Basically, I love the Wizarding World of Harry Potter any time of year. It is home to some of my favorite attractions. Diagon Alley is my favorite land ever, and I especially love it this time of year because the decorations are beautiful. They bring out some seasonal entertainment, and it's just like perfection. So I have been saving this adventure, my Harry Potter Christmas adventure, to share with you as part of a self-care day. So we are going to see all the seasonal entertainment. We are going to eat some delicious snacks. We're going to check out the decor. We're just going to have a really nice and relaxing day here in the Wizarding World. So come on. Headed into Islands of Adventure first to go to Hogsmeade. And while I do have a show to catch, I'm going to get distracted because Universal does this really cool thing where they hide ornaments in nods of extinct attractions and three attractions are being honored here at Islands of Adventure, and I love finding these. So number one, I just found the swords right there crossed with the jewel. That's from the eighth voyage of Sinbad show. It was a stunt show that was in the Lost Continent, kind of on your way to Hagrid's. So that's from that. And then also retired in the Lost Continent earlier this year was Poseidon's Fury, and his trident is up in the garland on this store. And then across the way outside the Islands of Adventure Trading Company, the big store here, You've got two dragons for dueling dragons. You've got ice dragon right here, the blue dragon in the garland, and the fire dragon, the red dragon over here. That was the roller coaster that opened with this park that was where Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure TM is now. And then at one point it was converted into dueling dragons and it was taken over by Harry Potter and themed to Goblet of Fire. But of course, now it's Hagrid's. But it was a Halloween Horror Nights house this year, which was really fun. And I just think that's such a fun little detail at Universal during the holidays that they salute former attractions. Apparently there's 12 attractions to look for in Universal, the other park. So we're going to see if we've got time to check those out amongst our Harry Potter fun today. We have made it to our destination, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, Hogsmeade. This is the original Wizarding World here at Universal Orlando. And this is where you've got Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure, TM, the three broomsticks, Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey inside Hogwarts. And it's just so magical. And I love it so much, especially this time of year when it's all decorated. Like it always feels kind of Christmassy here because of the snow. But when you've got all the garland and lights, it's just even better. And if you think it's beautiful right now, just wait till we see it at night. We're actually just popping into Hogsmeade for just a moment to see one of the shows. And then I'm gonna head over to Diagon Alley and return to Hogsmeade later tonight in the evening so we can see the lights and the light show. But first of all, it's time to see the Frog Choir. There are four small shows in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, two on each side. Here in Hogsmeade, you've got the Triwizard Spirit Rally, which has witches and wizards from Beaubaton and Durmstrang come demonstrate, like in Goblet of Fire. And then you've got the Frog Choir, which is the Frog Choir of Hogwarts, and they sing songs. But this time of year, they sing Christmas songs as well. And so that is our first stop today. Their shows end in like the mid-afternoon, which is why we're doing this now. And then we'll pop over to, to Diagon. And then back again, like I said. Don't you just love this decor? Like it's so classy and classic Christmas, but it does have the touches of wizard whimsy. Like look here outside of Spin Witches, which is the Quidditch shop, the decor, the garland has stitches in it. Me on that naughty list, don't wanna stack it. 
self care is already working. I love that they sing Christmas carols with the frog choir because there's just something like it hit me like how special is it? How lucky am I that I get to sit here outside of Hogwarts listening to them sing Christmas carols and it's just like this is so great. It's great every time of year but it's really special and magical right now and then I was waiting in line to get my picture with the frog choir and the team member asked if, if I didn't mind a Make-A-Wish family going in front of me. Which, like, first of all, can you imagine someone saying no? What kind of monster would be like, no, me first? So obviously I say, of course. And it was just, like, really sweet. And the kid didn't know what house he was in. And they took their time to, like, tell him about the different houses. And, like, it's very magical. And um, we are going to head out of Hogsmeade now. And we're going to head to Diagon Alley because we have another show to see. Headed to Diagon Alley now. I checked Hogwarts Express. It does have a 20 minute wait, which isn't too long. It's actually a very low wait time for that attraction. That is the train that connects the two Wizarding World of Harry Potters. But the show I wanna see starts at a certain time in like 35 minutes. And I don't think I have time to wait in a 20 minute line and then do the attraction too. Also, I did wanna point out that this is an awesome time to visit the parks because pretty much everything in the park has a 20 minute wait or less, except for Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure TM, which is currently down for technical difficulties. But even Velocicoaster, Forbidden Journey, the Hulk, very, very low waits. I'm here in that magical period between Thanksgiving and Christmas. So like the week after Thanksgiving to the first week and a half, two weeks of December, it's all decorated for Christmas as you can see. It's magical and wonderful, but you don't really have the crowds made it into Universal Studios Florida and I've got a few minutes to spare before the show so I'm gonna walk really slowly through the decorated sections to see if I can spot more extinct attraction ornaments on our way. We already found Kong outside of Revenge of the Mummy which is for confrontation and we found a cow which is a nod to Twister outside of Race Through New York starring Jimmy Fallon which is what was there before. But I'm definitely looking for Jaws Maybe something from Earthquake, maybe Ghostbusters, Beetlejuice. Just trying to think of stuff that no longer exists here at Universal. At the fire station, I found another one. First of all, this window's here all the time, but it's for a paranormal travel agent, which should give you a hint as to which one I found. If you guessed Ghostbusters, you're right. This is for the Ghostbusters Spooktacular, which was here from 1990 to 1996. It was a show, but this one's really cute because it's just a little slime on some ornaments. I am now desperately looking for a shark for Jaws, but I do want to point out how cute their garland is anyway. Look at like the haagen garland. It's got ice cream cones in it and over at Wetzel's Pretzels that had pretzels in it. Very, very cute decor, but I'm looking for a shark specifically now. And when I was on the holiday tour, our guide said it was near Starbucks. So here's Starbucks. Where's Bruce? Bruce, where are you, my angel? Oh, I see him. Awesome, there's actually two, which is even more fun. There's one on this garland right here at the exit, and then there's one on the lower garland over there. And he's wearing a Santa hat, which makes him so festive and delightful. And it kind of makes up for the fact that they don't put a giant Santa hat on the real Bruce hanging over there, but I love him. I wish I could buy that ornament. Universal, do you know where I can source this? I just think that is such a fun little detail. I think it's fun to look for your former favorite attraction. And again, there's 12 different attractions in this park. I still haven't found them all. But it's a very fun little bonus activity while you're here. But for now, we gotta get to, into Diagon Alley because there's only one more performance from Celestina Warbeck and the Banshees. And we gotta see it because it's their Christmas show. <sighs> again, how much do we love this decor? It's just so beautiful. Oh, and here we go. It's somehow even more magical walking in here at Christmas. Look at all the garland. We will do a full exploratory walk here in a minute to look at all the garland because it's got so much cute detail on it and check out some shops as well. I have a little holiday shopping to check off. But first, we're headed over to the stage to watch Celestina Warbeck and the Banshees. Celestina Warbeck is a book only reference, uh, but it, she is a lounge singer, a jazz singer that particularly Molly Weasley loves. And they listen to her, they actually introduced her at Christmas at the Borough, which is particularly apropos for why we're here. The other show they do in this park is the Tale of the Three Brothers, the puppet show, which is fantastic and amazing. And it's the puppets are just incredible, very much in style of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows but that's not Christmassy. 
So we're going to watch Celestina, who does, again, have a special Christmas set, special Christmas experience. She's got a special Christmas gown, and I am excited to enjoy her today. I love it so much. I think she's so fun. Her voice was phenomenal. And it snows during their set two times and it's so magical. I do wish it would snow more in the Wizarding World. I think that could elevate Hogsmeade if you walk through and it was snowing, but I will take it during Celestina. And I love, I love these little shows, all four of them. I especially love them again right now, but I just feel like it really brings this land to life and adds a little bit of extra that maybe you don't get if you're just walking in to see the rides and uh, do the wand. But I now want to walk around and look at all the beautiful decor. Again, do a little holiday shopping, but I need a beverage to do that. So there's new ones, let's go. Now by new, I do mean new-ish. There are two new beers in the Wizarding World, which I'm tickled about. Kind of like midway through Halloween Horror Night season, they debuted two new exclusive Wizarding World beers that you can get on both sides at various locations, the Daisy Root Draught and the Dark Forest Ale. And I've tried both of them at this point. Alan and I tried them at a couple Horror Nights when we were here like a date night or here with friends, but I don't think I've actually enjoyed one on camera and reviewed it officially. So let's make sure we do that. And then when it gets even cooler, it'll be time for a warm bevy. The Daisy Root Draught is a golden British ale. It's the one I'm gonna get. I really, really like it. It's, it's my new favorite of the Wizarding World exclusive beers because it's nice and light and crisp and the other ones are a little bit darker than what I normally drink. The Dark Forest Ale is a brown ale with some caramel kind of notes. Alan really enjoyed it. I don't think as much as some of the others that the originals, uh, but it's fun if you like craft beer and you know me, I love any time you can get a beer that you can't get anywhere else. And I especially love that it's Harry Potter. The Daisy Root Draught. It's so delicious. It is crisp. It is light. It is perfect if you want something just refreshing. Not super hoppy. And again, I'm really glad they added this one to the lineup because all the other Harry Potter beers, including the other new one, are darker and I prefer a lighter beer. So if you just like a classic like ale, you will enjoy. Now, Let's go look at some cute decorations. I could just oogle and ogle the garland forever. We're gonna hang out here until it gets a little bit darker so we can see it at dusk. It's just so pretty. I'm sorry I've said that a hundred times in this video. That's probably really annoying, but I can't help it. We're gonna pop into Wiseacres. This is a shop here that sells kind of classic merchandise items like shirts. They also have a large stationery section, which I love, but typically they have a bunch of ornaments too. And we have a Harry Potter themed bar in our house and a Christmas tree that I leave up all year round because I've deemed it decor. Uh, definitely not because I'm too lazy to put away two different Christmas trees. Um, and I like to add new ornaments to it and there's a few I've had my eye on. So I'm gonna see if we can find them somewhere in the park today. Okay, they have a couple of very cute ones. None right off the bat that are the ones I was looking for. I already have this one, the letter. I also have the train ticket, which I believe they sell in Globus Mundi, the travel shop. I really like this one, which is the Ollivander sign. I love the chocolate frog. I love the time turner. The time turner may have to come home. And I do like the owl delivering presents. The ones I'm really looking for though, I've hemmed and hawed over them for literal years and I don't know why I've never bought them and I think this year is the year. Um, they have little outfits. They have little Yule Ball outfits of Hermione and Harry and a couple other characters. Like they have their outfits tiny on tiny little hangers and they're adorable. And I, I feel like I just need them and I don't know why I haven't bought them yet. So we're on a quest for those, but very cute ornaments in here. We'll keep looking. I did find some cute Harry Potter wrapping stuff, like some gift bags that say Christmas at Hogwarts and some cards. 
that are very pretty. They're not Mina Lima, who's the designers I love that did all the design work for the movies for things like textbooks and newspapers and stuff, but they're very cute. Look at that one with the candles and the little pixie on top. Those are sweet. This one's pretty too. Slowly working my way to Madame Malkin's because a lovely witch said that the ornaments I'm looking for might be in there. But I just, again, I love that the garland is themed to which store it's outside of. Like, this is Ollivander's, the wand shop, so unsurprisingly, there's wood aspects to the garland. Outside Spindle Warps, the wool shop, they've got balls of yarn as the decor. Also, just a fun Easter egg that I love to point out sometimes. This is the uh, self-knitting needles and it is sewing the same thing that Molly Weasley's sewing when you first see the burrow in Chamber of Secrets. Continuing with the tour de Garland outside the Daily Prophet, the newspaper, you've got letters on their wreath and outside Flourish and Blots they've got beautiful poinsettia flowers made out of book pages. My favorite shops, the joke shop, Weezy's Wizard Weezes, owned by, of course, Fred and George Weasley. Their garland is Weezy's Wildfire Whizbangs, the fireworks that they sell at the store and that they notoriously set off to distract and anger Professor Umbridge during their grand exit of Hogwarts in Order of the Phoenix. Ugh. Can you just look at this detail forever? Like, I know I can't be alone. Just look at the spinning sign. Look at the brickwork. Look in the windows at all the different products and silly things. I love that the hat comes off of the Weasley and the bunny reveals itself. I love that if you don't look closely, you may not realize that this is a giant version of one of the Weasley twins in the window right here. There's his legs, his torsos in the top window, and his head's up top. Like, it's just, you look like you're in a movie right now. You look like you are truly in the Wizarding World, and it brings me so much joy. And we're at Spin Witches over in Hogsmeade, the Quidditch store here, Quality Quidditch Supplies. They don't have snitches, but they do have other balls, and they're in the house colors of Hogwarts. Just, y'all, the detail. Unbelievable. No detail left unturned. Y'all, I just love this land so much, and I have been here a million times, and I just find myself just standing and enjoying watching the dragon breathe fire and seeing people react to that and looking around and i was just looking in at the books here at flourish and blots and i noticed a detail i never have before there's a trap door right here there's a trap door that the shopkeeper would take down into the basement where they store all of their extra books and it's like no one notices this i've been here hundreds of times and i've never noticed this but it's all part of what makes this story come to life. And I am so grateful that I get to be in a place that brings my favorite story come to life. Headed into Madame Malkin's to look for the ornaments. And of course, her garland matches as well. It's beautiful pink ribbon, which definitely reminds me of Hermione's Yule Ball gown, which coincidentally is in that window right there. But let's go in. Let's hope they have the cute ornaments. Oh my God, they do. And y'all, oh, this is even better. They have tiny hair. Is this the last one? No, okay, there's two more. They have Harry's tiny sweater. Look. Me and the ornament match. I bought this sweater here years ago and I bust it out once a year for Christmas in the Wizarding World. And I love it so much. It's modeled after the sweater that Molly Weasley made Harry on his first Christmas in Sorcerer's Stone. And it's the first year he gets presents that actually mean something. And it's like, I'm going to cry thinking about it. Um, but this is so cute. Okay, buying this one for sure. And then they do have some of the Yule Ball gowns and outfits. They've got Fleur. They've got Harry's lovely dapper tucks. And they've got Victor Crumb. I don't see Hermione. And I don't see Ron either. Not that I would purchase Ron's, but it is funny because if you're a Harry Potter fan, you know Ron's Yule Ball outfit is a disaster. Maybe they have more. We're going to keep looking. Oh, thank you. I love this store because I like all of the different wizarding fashions. And one of my favorite things is that the hats like up on the walls and stuff, that you can buy those. Like if you saw this Dumbledore hat and thought, I would like to own that, look at that. It can be yours. You can fashion all kinds of looks 
from the Wizarding World. Picked up my ornaments. Now I originally had just picked up the Harry sweater and then Harry's Yule Ball outfit because they're sold out of the other ones. But then I saw that the Yule Ball outfits were $9.99 instead of $22. Plus I could stack my Universal Annual Pass discount on them. So I got all of them because why not? Treat yourself. It's the holidays. Um, I also saw that they had these sweaters for sale. They still have these. They also have Fred and George, which is funny because when I originally bought this sweater a few years ago, I wanted Fred or George because one, I love Fred and George. They're some of my favorite characters too. It's green, so it's still very Slytherin, but they only had extra, extra smalls in Fred and George left because they were discontinuing them, but they were so popular that they brought them back. So now if you want to get the actual English wool sweater, you can get Harry, Ron, Fred or George. Um, and I bust it out once a year just for this occasion, but Fred and George are back, which is fun. Headed into Nocturne Alley, where this wreath says to me, just because we're evil doesn't mean we can't celebrate. That's how, that's how I interpreted that. I just love that, even here, where it's not so on the straight and narrow, they like to decorate for the season. Like, look, even the evil store, Borgen and Burks, is celebrating the season. Also, unrelated to the seasonal decor. I love that they play the Harry Potter music throughout the lands and they change it based on which area you're in. So when you're near Fred and George's, you hear the happy, triumphant music of being in Wizards Wizard Weezes. But here in Nocturne Alley, you're hearing some of the darker music used in Half-Blood Prince and Deathly Hallows. And it just, ugh, everything's perfect here. It's just no notes popped into Borgen and Burks and they have some of this new collection that they've debuted recently, which is a spell-based collection. So they've got things like backpacks and leggings and all sorts of pins. It's like a little tin shirts and it's all based on spells from the Wizarding World. Look at this little like case for Akio. And ooh, a scrunchie. I love a scrunchie. And I'm obsessed with this collection. I think it's really fun. A little bit different. Look, even like the jewelry is different spells and how you would direct your wand if you're doing the wand magic. Little trinket dishes, Accio, plates, a mug, and most importantly, candles. I think I need to pick up a candle for Alan. If you know, Alan loves candles. This will be a, like a really good stocking stuffer. Let's see, they've got Lumos, Expecto Patronum, and Incendio. Let's give them all a sniff. Okay, first up, I'm trying to be out of the way. There's like two other people in here, but still. Okay, first up, Lumos. It smells very like crisp and clean. It smells good. Next up, Expecto Patronum. One of my favorite spells, but I don't know what this will smell like. Oh, it smells kind of like floral and sage. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's not, I don't know what I expected it to smell like, but it wasn't that. It's kind of like musky, outdoorsy. And then Incendio, which I assume is going to smell like fire, like a bonfire, which is one of my favorite candle scents. Um, and Alan's as well. Most of our candles that we have are like bonfire or like trees, just like sandalwood, like outdoorsy kind of natural smells. Yeah, that smells like a bonfire. That's delightful. I think I've found a little trinket for Alan. <sighs> These are fun. Last shop to pop into before we head across the way. We are at the Magical Menagerie and once again the garland is adorable because if you look closely there's little golden owls throughout it. So sweet. I don't know that they have any particular Christmas merchandise or anything new. They do have a new uh, like shoulder pet Hedwig that moves and makes cute little owl noises, but she's very popular and has most likely sold out. But I just think it's pretty in here and they've got garland in here and I think this is a really fun spot to get some little take homes, especially if you like the magical creatures of the wizarding world. You know, I like pretty much everything in this store, um, except for that thing. Want to know what's wild? In all my years coming, I've never noticed this snake. I've noticed that snake a million times because if you go on the outside, you can hear him speak parcel tongue. But I've never paid attention to this one. And you know what, snake? I'm sorry for that. I'm sorry 
for ignoring you. And now I won't any longer. So, boop. I hope you have a great night. Walking out of Diagon Alley with the most beautiful sky illuminating the dragon. And look at all the lights on now. Huh. It is so beautiful. If you're coming in the winter time to Universal, make sure you come in here in the evening. It is so stunningly beautiful. Look at that pink sky. I don't even know if it's translating to the camera, but it is like this beautiful cotton candy sky right now behind the dragon. Uh, but I'm gonna go get the train and head back over to Hogsmeade because I wanna see their decor in a little more detail, grab a hot butterbeer and enjoy the nighttime show. Taking the Hogwarts Express to get back over to Hogsmeade with my Universal Annual Pass, I get free Express Pass after four, so why not come check out the decorated station and just continue the Hogwarts merriment as we enjoy the day. The Hogwarts Express, you do have to have a park-to-park -park ticket if you want to ride it because it is a literal transportation between the two different parks. And it's different which way you go. So if you go from Hogsmeade to Diagon, what you see out the window of the train is different than when you go the other way. I personally prefer this way from Diagon to Hogsmeade. One, it's the route that Harry first went. And two, there's spooky, fun things on the train. So I like kind of what you see out the window a little bit more. Just a sweet little touch in here that they add presents amongst all the trunks that are being sent on the train. Best to do it in a run if you're nervous. Here. Pro tip, when you're disembarking from the Hogwarts Express, you're gonna come down right here before you flip around and go down those stairs, come right over here and you can get a beautiful photo with the train or of the train and it looked particularly stunning in the evening with the smoke and everything. So grabbed a couple pictures there and now I've got a little less than an hour back on this side of the park and I wanna just enjoy walking around again, looking at the decor and the lights and maybe pop through the Forbidden Journey queue because whilst that attraction makes me very nauseous, it has some Christmas decors inside the queue, which are fun. And then I'm gonna end the evening with the magic of Christmas at Hogwarts Light Show. The music. Also, I almost forgot, I was too, being emotional about the music and everything. Christmas has come early, friends, because they have finally updated Hermione on the Hogwarts Express. She used to sound like this, honestly, Ron, they're just sweets. Um, but she has taken some tonic from Madame Pomfrey. Hagrid's is literally right there. And she sounds great. Okay. Sorry, Hagrid. Hagrid is literally right there. Uh, okay, but anyway, Hermione sounds wonderful on the train now. Not as Hermione as she could, but much more like herself. And now we go into Hogsmeade. And now we are back in Hogsmeade and it is even more beautiful than it was during the day with all the lights all aglow on the different shop windows. Sigh. Look how beautiful it all is. So they're holding some guests to watch the next magic of Christmas at Hogwarts Light Show. Basically the way it works is starting at six o'clock, the show runs every 20 minutes, about an eight or 10 minute show. And it's projections on Hogwarts featuring different Christmas scenes like the Yule Ball and Snowmen. And it's very sweet and lovely. And I highly recommend it if you're here this time of year. So I just talked to a team member who said that they will let be letting the next group up once this show ends. Um, and then if I wanna go ride the ride, I can ride the ride and then come back and get a butterbeer and watch the last show. So I'm gonna kind of explore and look at some of the garland for a moment and then I'll move up shortly with this next group. Not holiday at all, but I do love that in the evening you can really see the serious Black Wanted poster. 
I mean, Gary Oldman is giving everything in this clip. I've just watched it in full like three times, and he is acting his Accio off. Popped into Honeyduke's The Candy Shop because they have a new chocolate frog card. It's Bauman Wright, who's the inventor of the Golden Snitch, and he has a fun detail Easter egg over in the Diagon Alley side that I've talked about before. And I mean, look at that stunning moustache, and he's got his snitch. I love that they keep adding the cards. That's a 2023 ad. If you want that one, you need to make sure you get a chocolate frog that has this sticker on it. Otherwise, you're just gonna get a random card of the mini, mini witches and wizards that they already have made. They have really cute Honeydukes themed ornaments in here, including chocolate frog cards of the Hogwarts founders. So there's Slytherin, Gryffindor, Ravenclaw, Hufflepuff, and Dumbles. And then you've got the chocolate frog one we saw already. I actually like this chocolate frog one better because it looks like the box. This cute one of the Honeydukes window and a Birdie Bots in both a 3D and like a flat tile. All very cute. There are so many. Oh wait, are these puzzles? <gasps> Look, that one's the Birdie Bots logo. And this one's the chocolate frog logo. Those are fun. Those would be a good gift. All right, looks like they're letting people up now towards the castle to watch the next viewing, which would be at this point, I think the 640 of the show. But I am gonna just go into Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journeys queue because they add some Christmas touches, some garland amongst some of the scenes. And I wanna check that out. Not gonna ride the ride though, cause it makes me wanna barf. And then I'm gonna come get a butterbeer to watch the last show of the night. Castle is. So Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey is the attraction here inside the castle. And it's a very cool technologically advanced attraction that features both simulator screens as well as practical sets. And you're hanging on this arm that kind of moves like an octopus and spins you about in all different ways. And it's very, very cool, but it makes a lot of people, myself included, very motion sick. So I don't feel like being motion sick right now. If you watched our Universal Photo Challenge, you saw the results. Uh, but it has a very cool queue that you can walk through even if you don't want to ride. And I always recommend if you're a Harry Potter fan walking through this queue because there's so many details and Easter eggs, things that pretty much anyone, even the casual Harry Potter fan might remember if you've seen the movies or read the books, like the Mirror of Eris said, which is the mirror that shows your truest desires so Harry sees his family. But then there's also like really specific book nods, like the statue of the one-eyed witch with a hump, which if you have read the books, you know that this is the entrance on the Marauder's map to one of the secret trails that Harry uses uh, after Fred and George give him the map. So really fun in here. I've done a video where I did over a hundred different Harry Potter details and Easter eggs if you're a nerd like me to watch, and you can see all kinds of things to look for. But we are specifically looking for today, wherever they've added holiday flair found the first of our holiday flair here where the moving portraits are you've got the four house founders salazar slytherin rowena ravenclaw helga hufflepuff and godra gryffindor and they've all got a little seasonal garland which is so festive and fun gonna snap a holiday founder selfie the gryffindors are celebrating as well they've got cards hung up by the mantle they've got a wreath coming into the Gryffindor common room. They've got a tree and some garland. And I believe there's one more little touch, which is my favorite of the decor. I just think the sorting hat with the wreaths is just cute. Just a little classy touch right here before you board. I mean, I'm not gonna board. We're gonna go get butterbeer, which sounds delightful. Exited out into Filch's Emporium of Confiscated Goods where they've got a lot of Christmas decor as well as a bunch of stuff from the new Christmas at Hogwarts collection, all kinds of ornaments, mugs, sweatshirts, blankets, and tons more ornaments. But we are running low on time before the final show, so we need to get our butterbeer because that's a must, an absolute must on this day. Now they sell all kinds of drinkable butterbeer at the Three Broomsticks. That's regular kind of soda inspired, frozen and hot. But not everyone knows that they also sell all three of those at the Hogshead and it usually has a shorter line. My favorite kind of butterbeer is the hot, but it's Florida. So it's normally not enjoyable here, but luckily it's actually like in the 60s right now. It's like crisp right now and it's gonna taste fantastic. The garland has been ogled Hot butterbeer has been acquired, and now we head up to Hogwarts. 
highly recommend if you want to see this light show seeing the last one and they don't publish what times they are i always just ask a team member but right now it's usually starting at six and then every 20 minutes till the park closes at seven but that could change so i always ask a team member but the later you can go the less crowded it'll be look how open this is it was like this whole section was packed for the show 10 minutes ago and now it's all open right here you get a great view if you stand kind of where i am you get a great view on the bridge it's a beautiful show enjoy it get yourself a hot butter beer it tastes like a warm christmas hug it, it tastes like a melted cupcake it goes against everything i stand for with things being too sweet it is very sweet but i just imagine that this is what Harry and Hermione were drinking when they went to the three broomsticks and like it's just it warms my soul especially like I said when it's literally in the 60s and I can actually drink this and have it warm me up. Oh, that show just warms my heart. I, when the first few notes of Hedwig's theme, do, 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 like when she flies across and it's all snowy, it's just so beautiful. I love the Weasleys ad. I love the Yule ball, fireworks at the end. It's just such a wonderful way to end a perfect, perfect afternoon here at Universal Orlando and celebrating the holidays in the wizarding world. Thank you all so much for watching and coming on this little self-care day with me. This is something that I started last year and I look forward to doing it year after year because it's just a place that's near and dear to my heart. I love just slowly enjoying and luxuriating and being in these lands as opposed to kind of like rushing about trying to, to do a bunch of rides or get a bunch of other content. It's really nice to just kind of approach this day a little bit differently and just really truly Im immerse myself into these places I love so much and, and, and just and I just feel incredibly grateful that I get the chance to do that with all of you. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you for all the support as always. I hope there's something that you're doing this time of year for you for a little bit of self-care during this very, very hectic and busy season. Um, let me know what that is down in the comments. And in the meantime, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe, follow us on social media, come hang out in Discord. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly, and it has been truly so magical. Good night.